An incident was detected. You might have found out about it via a dashboard, through a notification or any other means you have at your disposal. What do you do next? Do you just fix the issue or... You might be thinking that this is yet another video about monitoring or logging or tracing or alerting tools. If that's what you're looking for, you are in the wrong place. I already covered those in previous videos over there. Check it out, it's in the description. This is something completely different, yet somehow the same. It's something you might not be doing even though you should. Let's admit it. When we are tasked to fix an issue in production, most of us do just that. We find the cause of the issue and we fix it. If we do not panic, we might even do it by pushing changes to the Git repo that contains the manifest of the system or the application that is causing the issue. That's definitely better than just tweaking the system directly since at least we have a record of the changes in Git. Nevertheless, many of us do not record all the steps we take to discover and fix the issue. That's normal, or to be more specific, that's an expected human reaction. There is an issue and we need to fix it as soon as possible. The problem is that we do not record the steps we take to discover and fix the issue. We are not likely to learn from our own mistakes, hence we are not likely to improve the system or be able to detect and fix a similar issue in the future. Now, some of you are saying, that is not true, not true at all. I know what I did and I can do it again. I learned from my mistakes. However, even if you do have a good memory, you're not alone. We work in teams and even if you are the only one who knows what happened, how it happened and how you fixed it, you're not working as part of the team if you just do it for yourself, by yourself, and if you're the only one who knows what happened and how it happened and how you fixed it. Now, those issues I'm talking about are typically fixed with post-mortems. We write down everything we did to discover and fix the issue and we share it with the team. Nevertheless, that is a waste of time and effort if you start writing post-mortem documents only after the issue is fixed. Moreover, there is a good chance that we will forget some of the details since we are not recording them as we go. And that is where Fiberplane comes in. It allows us to explore metrics and logs in search for the cause of an issue while at the same time recording every single step we take. The end result of using Fiberplane to detect and fix the issue or issues are post-mortem documents that are easy to read and easy to understand. So let's see it in action and then talk about it, see the pros and cons and whether you should use it. I already have a cluster up and running. I deployed a single application over there. That's enough to show how it works. And I generated some traffic. And that traffic generated some issues. So let's try to see whether we can figure out what is causing the issue, how we can proceed, how we can record everything, and all the goodies that Fiberplane gives us. Now, I will assume in this hypothetical situation, actually not I, you should assume that I already went through a dashboard, probably Grafana, saw that there is a spike in something behaving, misbehaving, and that, or maybe I got a notification that something is wrong, right? So this is the next step. I discovered that there is an issue and now I'm trying to find out what the issue is, what's causing the issue, how to fix it, and hopefully record everything for the future generations to come. So I'm going to go to studio.fiberplane.com and see what I can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new notebook. And over there, I can start defining, start recording what I'm doing. I can put a title, that's boring. Everything can I put the title or a name. I can add some labels. 
interesting but boring also what matters is what's happening below i can start writing anything i want it's in markdown format i can use all the markdown syntax like hey this is how i write in bold this is italic i can create links and so on and so forth more importantly i would normally start by writing hey this is the issue this is what we detected and now we are working on it right so this is almost as if having your iPhone or mobile phone and recording everything you're doing except that this is now being in a text format not audio format. Now one of the important features is that this is this can be used as a collaborative tool so I can say hey Victor you do this or hey I'm Victor and I'm doing this or I'm doing that and you might be doing something else. So this is a collaboration in a similar way as we would collaborate on a Word document, not Word document, Google Docs, for example, right? So let's say that right now I would, I'm going to take over the investigation of the issue, me, Victor, right? And I'm going to start by querying Prometheus and I can query Prometheus by saying, hey, Prometheus dashboard, I want to inject a Prometheus dashboard based on a query that I'm going to type into this document. So I'm investigating and recording at the same time. So what should I do first? Let's say that I want to see all the requests coming from Nginx and the query in Prometheus for that is Nginx ingress controller requests. And here I'm getting all the requests coming to my system through Nginx ingress. I can change the view. I have different ways how I can uh, visualize what I'm seeing and what I'm exploring. And I can see from this graph, even though it's a very small sample, that all of a sudden I had a spike of requests. Something's wrong over there. Next, I might want to say, hey, how about I investigate how many of those requests returned error? How many of those requests did not return response code 200? And I can clearly see right now that there is a spike from nothing to quite a few non-200 responses in my system. So something is wrong. Next, maybe I will check uh, whether there is overcommitted CPU. Maybe there isn't enough CPU in the system. And the query for that is Zoom, Cube, uh, Pod, the Controller, and so on. I'm not going to go into details about writing Prometheus queries. That would be a separate subject. Potentially you already know that and if you're hooking Fiberplane into some other data store or combining it with other data stores then queries will differ depending on which data store you're using. Since there is no overcommitted CPU, the values would be positive and they're right now negative. I might want to check whether, for example, there is overcommitted memory by executing yet another Prometheus query. Next, I might want to check whether there are pods that are not in the ready state yet another Prometheus query, there is nothing in a graph, so there are no misbehaving pods, and so on and so forth. I would be adding comments stating what I'm doing, I would be executing some queries, deducing something based on those queries, and then continuing the investigation on and on and on and on and on. This is essentially the same process that I would do or execute from Prometheus itself. You know, I query this metric, query that metric, except that this time everything is recorded with specific timestamps. I can put uh, hypotheses, I can provide some answers, I can record not only the queries at specific time intervals, but also my thought process that went into it. And I can just be writing a diary over here while investigating the issue. At one moment I would find out what the cause of the issue, whatever it is, and I would fix it. And as a result, I would have a detailed post-mortem of everything that happened, everything that led me to the cause and the solution to the problem. Now, in this demo, in this specific demo, I'm using only Prometheus, but right now you can also hook Fiberplane to Elasticsearch uh, for any type of data, whatever the Elasticsearch, whatever you're keeping in Elasticsearch, if anything, and Loki for logs. Additional data sources should be coming very, very soon. So for now, we are limited to Prometheus, Elasticsearch, and Loki. Uh, at least two of those three are arguably one of the best tools, uh, tools you should be using anyways. So it's a very, very good start 
for fiber plane. I can also choose to share the notebook that I created as a template so somebody else who might be investigating a similar issue can start, instead of starting from scratch, can start from my template and reproduce, maybe modify, improve the steps that I perform. Finally, there is also a way to trigger notebooks. So we can trigger creation of notebooks with specific data based on certain events, uh, certain hooks, which I will not explore right now. You can do it yourself. That's enough for a quick demo. You probably get uh, the gist of how it works and how potentially useful it is. Let's talk about pros and cons and whether you should potentially use it for your post-mortems. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the fiber plane. Let me start by saying that fiber plane, at least from my perspective, is not a replacement for monitoring and alerting tools. You still need your Prometheus, your Grafana, your Blocky, or whatever else you're using. This is not a replacement of any of your observability tools. Instead, it is a complement. It, uh, it is in addition to the tools that you are already using. And it is mostly focused on, on one hand, investigation of issues, and on the other, creation of reports, what we typically call post-mortem. Except that post-mortems are traditionally made or written after we fix the incident, but in this case, it is done during the this whole process of investigation and solution finding and whatever you're doing to fix it. So we still need dashboards like Grafana, we need alerts, we need metrics, we need logs, and we need traces and trace stores. And we should continue using Prometheus, Loki, Jagger, or whatever else you might be using. And that's a good thing. Fiberplane is not trying to reinvent the wheel and replace the tools we know and we love. Instead, it tries to fulfill a gap in the observability tool chain. Fiberplane gives us a way to investigate issues and create post-mortem reports in a way that is easy and intuitive. And just as importantly, without almost any overhead. So you're not forced to remember what you're doing or you're not spending more or at least not much more time than necessary on fixing the issue. And as a result, you will get the document with all the steps of everything you did. Now let's talk about pros and cons. Let's start with negative things, things I do not like. The biggest one, the biggest issue for me is that right now, at this very moment, Fiberplane does not have the support for tracing. We have monitoring or metrics, that's Prometheus or Elasticsearch. We have logs, which is Elasticsearch or uh, Loki. And the third biggest piece missing is tracing. I would like to see the support for something like Jager. The second, and this is minor issue, is that Fiberplane does not come with a Helm chart and there is no Fiberplane operator. The way how we install Fiberplane is a bit finicky. You know, you copy and paste the deployment specification from the documentation. I did not show that part, but it's a bit finicky. Nothing major, but it could be improved. And the third and the final thing I do not necessarily enjoy or like is the integrations part. Uh, right now, we can it can be integrated with Prometheus, Loki, and Elasticsearch. That's not necessarily enough. Uh, you might be lucky that that's exactly the stack you're using, but if Fiberplane wants to expand its user base, it will need additional integrations over there. And I'm pretty sure that that's coming very, very soon. But right now, in January 2023, only those three supported um, backends or storage options are available. Now, as for the good things, the pros, uh, first of all, it's a great tool for post-mortems and we do not have enough tools of that kind. So I cannot say it's unique that nobody's doing that type of uh, operations, but it is um, a member of a very, very small group of tools. So we definitely need more and uh, Fiberplane fulfills that need for more tools that will help with uh, postmortems and investigations of issues and so on and so forth. Second, it is very easy and intuitive to use. You almost do not need to read any documentation or anything. You just create a notebook and you immediately figure out 
how it works, you maybe need to learn a couple of commands like slash Prometheus gives you Prometheus, but that part is very, very easy. And finally, there is the option I really like, and that's to create a notebook from a trigger. Uh, I didn't show that in the demo, but that's potentially very useful because usually you, we find out that there is something wrong because some alert was triggered and maybe we got a message on Slack or in a dashboard or whatever, and that trigger can be used to create a notebook, maybe based on certain templates so that we do not start from scratch, and then we can go through the steps and find out what the issue is and record everything. So, should you use Fiberplane? Well, maybe, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. And whether you should or shouldn't is not really related to the usefulness of Fiberplane because it's absolutely awesome. I love, I absolutely love the tool. The reason why I'm saying maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't is that it depends on which tools you're using to collect metrics and logs and traces and so on and so forth. So if the current version of Fiberplane is dealing, uh, having integration with the tools you're using, primarily Prometheus, Elastic and Loki, then you should definitely jump into Fiberplane, or at least try it out. If you're using some different stack, then maybe wait and hopefully not for a long time. Anyways, the tool is absolutely fantastic. You should try it out. The only question is whether the tools you are using that should be integrated with Fiberplane are the same tools as the Fiberplane currently supports. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.